Francisco County Jail's uh, units of service, which mean mental health evaluations, medication planning, therapy, discharge planning, and case management, all of that stuff having to do with mental health uh, in the county jail rise between 20, uh, 2004 and 2014. What was the what was the um, the amount of increase in provision of the services? Okay, fifty percent. Eighty percent. Okay, so who says A one hundred percent? Who says B eighty percent? Eighty. Okay, we got two and C fifty percent. Eighty percent is a number. He's on target tonight. In the prize. Well, I know, Sheriff. The Mike Hennessy, Sheriff. Yeah. Did a lot of reforms um, and always has ha always has ha has done it. Um, and um, our new sheriff is continuing on. And even though people, a lot of people don't like uh, what's his name that was ousted as sheriff, um, he did a lot of reforms too. Well, be because we simply don't have jail space to put everybody. What, what, what Mercury was reacting to, and which is still a work in progress, is you know, the, the criminalization of poverty, of homelessness, and of mental illness that is a big, you know, is a big issue that, that we're really just starting to grapple with on a statewide level, mostly. Um, but you know, this, is what, this is what the mental health ward of the San Francisco jail looks like. It's got bars. Um, and the and the, the psychologists who do evaluation do them in jail cells. Uh, this is not the model that um, that that uh, anyone in the psychology profession wants to have. Um, and it's uh, uh, they, they what they want to do. This is uh, I, I believe this is at 850 Bryant um, in the in the in the jail unit downtown. They, they want to, while they're uh, rebuilding the jail, completely tear this down and build a modern uh, psych, you know, psychiatric facility with enough, um, enough capacity and the right, the, 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 right, uh, the right amount of space and the right kinds of spaces um, and the right, uh, right, right amount of infrastructure and staffing to deal with the incredible influx of people with mental illness in, in the jail system. Um, but there's there's really an active debate right now about whether the, whether uh, how how much uh, work we should be doing to keep people with mental illness out of the out of jail in the first place. And so one of the things one of the one of the things that uh, the city has been working on are, are alternative programs. There's a mental health court now that uh, provides alternative sentencing for people with mental illness, and they can. They, they can go and they they can go in front of a, 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 a judge who just deals with these kinds of cases and uh, and they have programs that, that they have you know, direct uh, access to social workers and, and counselors and um, and that helps stabilize people much more than booking them into the jail um, on minor violations and then having them kind of you know cycle downward um, but this is a real issue. This was um, something that we covered in our issue on homelessness uh, the fall before last, which is also up there. Um, but uh, you know, with mental illness being such a big um, portion of the homelessness problem. Um, okay, yeah, so, so the project we did, um, and actually this has been, this you know, comes full circle back to Hygiene's story um, on the website a couple of weeks ago, um, is is looking at the the what was promised uh, a, a decade ago, or a little over a decade ago, with this this grandiose idea of a ten year plan to end homelessness, chronic homelessness, and suffice to say, it didn't work. <laughs> um, and, and and so we wanted to kind of pick apart why that was, and it was it was there were there's it, there's no one really clear answer, answer to that, but if you really start digging into the data and looking, you know, interviewing people who work in, in, in systems, and this is this has actually come out and and the, and the city government is now really starting to acknowledge some of the problems that we, we pointed out, um, is that this, um, 
first of all, there's, there's, not enough there's not enough housing, there's not enough supportive housing for people with mental illness or with drug addiction or with physical illness. And, and, and uh, so if you are diverting resources that used to go into outpatient services into housing, this idea of housing first, just get people off the street, meet their basic needs, you know, Maslow's hierarchy of needs, get, you know, get them shelter first, and, and then you can worry about you know, the other problems that people might have that, that, that help stabilize them. Um, that that um, this, this idea is easier, easier said than done. And probably the biggest reason is that housing, you know, right when they were trying to implement this, housing got really expensive. And so they could just, they could afford to buy a lot less of it with their limited funds in the Department of Public Health and the Human Services Agency for, um, for supportive housing. It just, their dollars just didn't go far enough. Um, and so what you had was this kind of, this kind of um, donut hole where you have, or you have this gap where you have some people who are selectively picked out of homelessness and put in really nice housing, um, mm -hmm. you know, really decent housing, that, uh, but, which there's not a lot of. And, the, the vast majority of people who are still out there waiting, and they don't know how long they're waiting, because the city doesn't make public its waiting list. And, uh, and, and so that's one of the things that they're now starting to really kind of pick apart, um, and they're, um, they're taking pieces of the Department of Public Health and the Human Services Agency, merging them into a new department that's gonna start to try to get all of these procedural issues and the, the inter-departmental inter, uh, bureaucratic infighting sorted out, hopefully that'll start to make some progress. It still won't bring more money into the, into the city, but at least it'll start to make, uh, it'll, at least it will start to get a clearer picture of what the needs are. Um, so, uh, and, and, that's, uh, and that's one of the things that um, news organizations are trying to address now with this, um, it's, it's called the SF Homeless project, um, which is somewhat of a misnomer because it's really about, it's really an SF homelessness journalism project. Um, uh, but the idea is, that's right, yeah, but the, but the idea is um, let's, let's take the, co the conversation about, about the issue to a higher level. Let's not go in with the assumption that journalists usually go in with, which is that this is an intractable problem People have always uh, been homeless. They always will. There have always been, um, you know, hobos and um, and marginalized people who haven't had housing, and uh, it's their fault. And um, and, and it's uh, you know, and, and um, there's nothing that can be done about it. Uh, and uh, you know, the the better. You know, there are a lot of myths about homelessness. The, you know, the more housing and services we we pay for, the more people will come into to town. Well, that's actually not true. They that. Um, uh, so, so the idea, and, and and a lot of these organizations are kind of starting to experiment with this, is to look at solutions, um, kind of like we did with our homeless, uh, with our housing solutions issue. Really focus on okay, well, what are the policy options that we could implement now um, that will pay off dividends in the near future and the and the long term future. Um, and you know there were there were a couple of hundred articles that came out um, over the last couple of you know, last, last two or three weeks um, about this uh, and and uh, I don't know I don't know which ones are going to get picked up on but it seems to be that there's sort of a critical mass of um, uh, of people who are people in the media who are um, kind of uh, over the cynicism and are, get, are getting beyond the solution. So that's really kind of exciting, I think. Mm -hmm. um, oh, yeah, any, any discussion? Anyone on that? I, I uh, have a um, soft spot in my persona for people who are living on the street. Um, I'm the founder of Larkin Street Youth Center back in 1983 and 84. Uh, I've worked for years on homeless youth issues. 
And I was so distraught when I heard that uh, the United Nations was looking at criminalization of homeless in the U.S. Hmm. That um, I reached out to some friends of mine in Washington, and I actually have a copy of the Human Rights Commission report, and it's really seriously shocking. And um, it opened my eyes even more than they already were to what is really going on in cities involving the homeless. And living down in this neighborhood where the courts seem to put the uh, criminals on parole in my neighborhood instead of putting them in jail because all the homeless people are sitting in jail. Um, they don't have any room to put criminals. Uh, it's rather potent what is really going on. And um, I see that, uh, I'm, one, I'm glad there was a concentrated focus. I think that it's focus and go on to something else. Um, and so this is going to fall in the background. I do have calls into the Mayor's Office of Homelessness and the Coalition of Homeless to follow up on the bar report um, on the issue. And um, because I want, and hopefully like to be able to do a forum uh, to, with this organization somehow on looking at what we can do locally as individuals um, and stakeholders in our community to assist um, at least uh, shortening the amount number of homeless on the street. And I don't mean putting them in behind bars, that's not the answer. But I also think, because I picked up the number that they put out on Channel 7, the 795, 100,000 uh, homeless people, which makes about 7,000 homeless people in San Francisco, roughly based upon the 2010 census. Um, that's a lot of homeless people. And we're fo I know they were focusing a lot on the camps, on Division Street, and under Cesar Chavez. But that's but, just the most visible population. I mean, so that's what you saw in the video, on the videos. Right. That's what makes for, for dramatic news coverage. Yeah, I mean, that's, yeah. The, that's the sound bites. But I think that we need to realize that almost every park in this city has people living in it. There are, are neighborhoods up in, I mean, we have people sleeping in Huntington Square Park at night on top of Knob Hill. And I think the only park that doesn't have anybody sleeping in it is Bowdoin. Because uh, <laughs> it's got gates. I mean, yeah. middle of the tunnel, I, our park will be sleeping in it. Um, but um, park. they sleep a lot of other places. And they're constantly harassed um, by the PD which I'm really irked about. Well, you should, you should definitely read Hygen's story. Um, it, uh, there, was, there was a whole session um, organized by uh, the Journalism Program at San Francisco State on uh, uh, ways to cover uh, homelessness better, and there was, a, there was a, a, a panel on criminalization of the homeless, uh, and, and that was, and there was actually, some sparks flew there, um, where uh, oh, yeah, the mayor's office. <laughs> yeah, the mayor's office got really defensive on that. What part of the homelessness is criminal? Thank you. Well, hi, Jen, you want to uh, offer your thoughts on that? How the San Francisco? Now, how, what part of the oh, homeless is criminal? Is, is that like a rhetorical question? Yeah. That, that's how I see it. Because I don't think being I, there are these sit-lie laws, there are these sit-lie laws, right. That are un, well, it's, it's sit-lie laws. Yeah, it's actually asking, but yeah, I mean, and, and, and there's, yeah, there's that, and then, um, uh, I don't know, not too long ago, um, uh, I'm not a huge fan of uh, Scott Wiener, I think he is partly responsible for it, not yeah, totally responsible yeah. for authoring, uh, I heard something about it, like, you can't, can't sleep in parks, or, or either that, or basically you can't be in public parks, you know, during, you know, after, at night, you know, from like, I think 11 until, you know, 6 or something like that, the overnight hours, make off, off limits to anybody, you know, so. It's always 
been a ordinance as long as I've lived here. There's been a I mean, th they, we had well, we had laws back in the '80s about sleeping in parks after 10 o'clock. There's, see, a, there's always been a law that you cannot sleep in public after dark. Well, see, here's, here's, so where's, the, where's the compassion of the city? It's talking about building affordable housing and everything else, which is not affordable. <laughs> uh, but there's no compassion for the people who don't have anything. There's no compassion. So how can we back to such, such, such lunacy? The mayor and all the rest of his goon heads, how can we, how can we back them? How can we sit there and say, well, we had this law, that law, we had to go by it? No, we, we shouldn't. We should stand up and strive them and say, no, it's enough of that. Because, number one, people who are, who are homeless should not be criminalized ever. They're not homeless because they want to be. There's families out there with kids on the street. There's old people on the street with no home. A place that was a, let's go worse than that. The veterans came back from Vietnam and was treated with disrespect. So America is, is, is known for its cruelty. We should be, we should be tired of that well, and so let them know about it. Well, it, it's definitely, I think, I think you're, you're absolutely, you know, both of you are right on, right on target with um, reframing the, the issue as one of human rights. Um, and until you, until you uh, really absorb and, and, and start thinking about things from that perspective, um, it, you're, it's, just moving, it's, just, it's just moving pieces around on a, on a, on a, on a checkerboard. Um, you, you're, you're just gonna um, solve one problem and then create another. Um, and that's, you know, that, that's, you know, that you, you can't not police the streets because criminal activity does occur yeah. and sanitation issues do occur. But if you overreact to it, and you don't provide alternatives, um, you you may actually like what happened a block away from my house uh, a couple of months ago, uh, where the cops saw this guy walking around allegedly with a knife, uh, and in about 30 seconds they shot him dead because they didn't they, because they saw him as, as mentally unstable and unpredictable, and and this that, this kind of conversation like the whole the one that's very popular right now that everyone's talking about this early December last year. Oh no no this was um, I, it was like in March or April. Yeah. Um, Luis Gong, Gongora on on um, on Shotwell Street, yeah. and and that was the, so so the the policing issues are intimately tied in with uh, with with our policies around homelessness. Which are intimately tied in with issues of of economic equity and economic justice. I think that was the one. Sorry, I think I mean I could be wrong, but I think that was the one that pretty much like broke the, the straw that broke the camel's back, in which the, the the chief was you know asked to you know resign. Right. Sure, yeah, well, the, there that. was a there was a hunger strike in front of the Mission Police Station, and then there was one more shooting, and that was the that then, was the straw. Then to come to find out, Heather Fong actually wanted to get that guy. Like, sir, she actually tried to fire him at one point. She was unable to. Well, this is one more thing about that. Uh, I heard a couple years ago there was a guy with a gun somewhere nearby. Oh, here? The thing about the other three. Yeah. Oh, yes, yeah, they talked him down. Huge. And that was, and that was like, you know, just recently here, like 7th and Market, right? So we can all the, celebrate. He's you know, alive. We're in a bank. The old bank, and that's kind of like, uh, well, yeah, pretty much. But now, what the opposite of, 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 you know. But now, what do we do with this mentally troubled person who's. He, he, he did have a gun, and, you know. But he what are you going to do with basically, that? Basically, well, he was shooting him, but he did have a gun, and he, um, well, you know, he wanted, he wanted, you know, the police to shoot him and oh. kill him. So right. I've, from what I've heard, but hey, they basically. Hey, brother said the police are going to kill him. But the, the police of. basically took a, a, you know, they took a, oh, a distant approach. They monitor safety, but they, you know, the acting chief says they were prepared to, like, you know, wait there as long as it took to de-escalate the situation. But, 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 the, point, but the whole point is, we created the economic and social conditions for, for, for these kinds of uh, violent events to take place. Value but life. actual, you know, like, you know, like, or you know, gunshots were not fired, okay, and and nobody got seriously or permanently injured, okay, the cop or bystanders or killed, you know, and that's something that is should be. And 
Yeah. See, I went to the man put some all that, all that drama. Did they beat him down after they got him into the speed station?